Once upon a time, long, long ago in the kingdom of Anwen, there lived a Prince Charming, to some. Personally, I always found him to be a bit, shall we say, pushy. Allow me to introduce myself. Robin Tutor, wizard, although temporarily manservant to the prince. A position that will end when the prince marries on the morrow. That having been said, our story begins. Very man had just caused why these two young lovelies should not be wedded. Speak now, or forever hold your whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. The bride is yours. Hey! Hey! Hail to the prince. Hey! And now, fairest bride, to our nuptial chamber and eternal bliss. <laughs> Let us hope, sire, your own bride will be more willing. Though less cloven of hoof. <laughs> <laughs> well said, squire, well said. Saved you, John, I am put upon. <laughs> yes, John, how many damsels have you saved? Embedded. Mm. I keep no count, mm -hmm. only memories sweet as rum pudding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, perhaps we'd best call it a night, sire. Your nuptials do approach, and I think... Ah, uh, there will be no talk of tomorrow. While this day still has newness in it. So don't worry, sir. My wizardry shall make this young lady vanish with a single snap of my fingers. So sorry, sir. Magic is an inexact science. Oh, here we are. Fleeto! Oh, take her down the back stairs. John! My layabout son, wenching past the cock's crow on his wedding day. Come, father. Even a condemned man is entitled to a final meal. And condemned you shall be. If this aging king can take the measure of you. It is a fine thing you do this day, my son. Your marriage to the princess of Lothian will end three centuries of war between our countries. And so I'm to be married, and for what? Can any man remember the cause of this damnable war? Something about tulips, wasn't it? <sighs> and for that war, all hope of true love ended. You lie with milk, Beta. Did you speak of true love? No. My marriage to your mother was arranged as well, and I too bemoaned my fate. But as the years passed, I grew to love her. As you will, the Princess Gwendolyn. <laughs> Who, for all we know, has but one eye in the middle of her head. You're thrusting in all the wrong places, John. It is time you learn when to use your sword and when not to. And yet my loneliest subject has more freedom. In different ways, sire, we all bear the curse of obligation. <laughs> Call serving me a curse. I should have your head. Apologies, sire. For the single moon remaining in my service, I shall hold my knavish tongue. Hmm? It's seven years already. Till the full moon next, yes, sir. I suppose you still plan to squander your freedom to pursue this wizardry of yours? Well, it's my own obligation. As you know, sire, I, I come, come from, from a long, long line of wizards. Yes, I know, but you have no talent for them. If 
you had any sense at all, you would draft a new agreement at once. I will even raise your pay. Come, you uh, must admit, life with me has never been dull. A tempting offer, sir. But I should like to make mine own excitement and have, shall we say, less of yours. You shall die of boredom. <laughs> yes, well. garden in which we are to be married, just as I dreamed. The Lothian princess wedded to the prince of Anwen. It was a nightmare. Our marriage shall end this petty war and restore peace to both our kingdoms. It wasn't petty. And victory was ours. More often than not. Yes, but the victory I seek, mother, is one of the heart. A marriage of faithful souls. Such a victory you shall not have, my dear, for it exists not. It will, Mother. One day it will. Arrives. Oh, Mother, he is exactly as I imagined him. I'm just as I imagined him as well. He is my one true love. My heart fairly speaks it. And your heart speaks gibberish. Your intentions are not honorable. My lord, how can I ever repay you? Dear lady, were it not my wedding day?
Your Majesty, we found him fornicating in the bell tower. John. Father. An unexpected pleasure. This scoundrel is your son. Fair Quentin, if in my weakness I have offended thee, How dare you approach my daughter? Seize him! We shall slaughter every man, woman, and child in your kingdom for this insult! No! There shall be no more war. Then make good this grievance. Take my son, Pius. Judge him as you will. You would offer me your only son and heir. An, an excellent point, father. If I keep my head, I will in time earn the crown. Here, here. I only ask that his punishment befit his status as a prince. You have my word. Take them away. Them? Did you see them? Other. But I have but one moon left in my service. I, I, I hardly know the man. Sire, you met him, didn't you? Because you couldn't have met me, for I've only met him once. And even then it was dark! This tribunal of the great court of Lothian shall now render its verdict. John of Anwin, you have been found guilty of breaching your royal promise and defaming the crown of Luthien. Quarter them and boil them in oil. Boil them in oil and then quarter them. <laughs> These are the choices? Uh, good men, minor scoundrel sins. Surely there are more reasonable punishments. Be silent! This talk of, of quartering and oil disturbeth me greatly. Finally, a beacon of light in this age of darkness. Uh, let us uh, stake them out in the sun, cover them with honey, uh, and allow beetles to slowly consume their flesh. Good man, I pray you. Spare my son's life. Your son has broken the heart of our only daughter. For this, there is but one punishment. A frogging. Oh. Yes, a frogging. My royal wizard shall conjure a curse which will cause your son so fair and highborn to become a most hideous and low frog. Yes. Sire, I know of this frogging. It is at best a wives' tale. Excellent. When the sentence cannot be executed, we shall escape during the chaos. A most creative sentence, Majesty. The frogging shall commence. Indeed, sire. Set us hopping at once. <laughs> Like the what? It matters not, but if anyone can frog us, wax is he? In the interest of compassion, Her Majesty offers the following conditions. Once transformed, both prince and squire shall remain as frogs until such time as a fair maiden does kiss this lascivious prince upon the lips. <laughs> Should he manage to find such true love, the prince must then induce this maiden to marry him before the noon bells, ushering in the full moon next, remaining faithful to her for the rest of his natural life. Might I reconsider the quarter of the night? <laughs> Silence! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
with your cold fist. Well, I hate oh. cold sign, I really do. I know ah. this from it. Ah. It is a best of wives tale. Oh. Oh. Well, I mean, I like that, sire. As if your actions had nothing to do with why we're here. So calm, I'm very... calm down. If we keep our wits, we shall be walking upright before the full moon next. Sorry, Your Highness. Oh, lightning! I don't like lightning! It's right! Get run! I always remember my 11th birthday, sire, because all the children came in wearing false faces. And when they went surprised and took them off, I realized I didn't know them. They were at the wrong party. Well, I mean, that happened at 11. Mm. When I was 12, it was a different event at all. I... Shh, Rodney, look! Uh, a comely lass just begging to be kissed. And with that kiss, the spell will be broken. <gasps> Quickly, sire! Off you go! I'm off! Thrust! Oh, I'm coming, fair maiden! I'm coming, fair maiden! Closer! Closer! Leap, sire! Back leg thrust! There it goes! I've got a big one now! <laughs> Missed again! Uh, there is three full moons I have come and gone. But I mean, who's calling? When I wish to know the calendar, I shall ask you! <sighs> Trust me, Rodney. A maiden will be kissing me before the next full moon. And here, the castle where the Duke of Lothian romanced his duchess with tales of fiery dragons and wizards. All right, come on, everyone. We're going into the castle. Don't you worry, little fella. 
No one's gonna hurt you while Kate Russell's around, okay? Princess Kate! Oh! <laughs> There you go. No, 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 don't put me down. Pick me back up. Home again. Safe, huh? Oh. oh. What a fine little frog you are. Say cheese. Cheese? Mm. No, wait, wait, wait! Princess Kate! No, don't go! Wait! Hey, I told you I'd be right back, buddy. So, so near. And yet so far. Come on, boy. I feel renewed, Rodney. We've been in this magical city for an hour, and I came within an inch of breaking the spell. We will be men before the morrow. Men before the morrow. With all due respect, sire, I despise your optimism. I loathe this amphibian existence. I don't even like the colored bean. I never... Oh! oh! Rodney, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. This smells familiar. Aha! Nothing like a bit of port to cheer a man up. Is it good port? I'm a deep water sailor just come from afar. You, you give, give me some whiskey, I'll drink the whole jar. What a feisty young sailor preparing for sea. Who needs a young maiden whose kisses are me? <laughs> oh, I feel much better, oh, as do I. Well, I can even see the beauty of this strange and wondrous place. Now, you mark my words, Rodney. We shall not be frogs for long. <laughs> Sire, I feel a jig coming over me. Good! Well, dance, lad! Dance! Dare I? I shall! I truly shall! Go on, give us a step. <laughs> oh, look hey. at your move, you hey. whirling dervish! Hey! That's it, hey. keep your back straight. <laughs> Get those legs up. Oh. <laughs> Come on, you've got more spring than that. <laughs> oh, now mind your step. Fun, oh. Sire. Rodney! I Rodney! <laughs> <laughs> oh, frog overboard! Oh, that was a fine jig up to that point, Rodney. Hello. What's this? Margo, you're back in the car. It's freezing out here. Where are you going now? Petal! I think I'm going to have a closer look. Can't you see you're missing the point? Am I? It does require a certain leap of faith to believe Margot Stockard, a teenager. The reviewer is blind. <laughs> so blind, he had any trouble seeing that, that, what's her name, that ambitious protege of yours. I can't believe you feel threatened by we, Camille. <sighs> of course I don't. But a promising ingenue? Give me a break. She doesn't have the chops to play Juliet. Does she? You are my Juliet. There's no other. Oh, Margot, you are my queen. Oh. Your Highness, do you hear that? Queen Margot! Sire, she is one of us! Oh, at least Romeo married his Juliet. And look what that got them. I thought we agreed marriage is for the little people. It's a silly piece of paper. You and I live in a passionate dream, bonded by desire. So it's not that I'm so hideous and old? Of course not. <laughs> she will certainly fit the bill. Make your move, sire. Would you still love me if I were? Margot. <laughs> Look, it's a sign. I would still love you if you were as ugly as this toad. I beg your pardon? Warts and all. Wards. Could you kiss it? No! No, 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 not you. No! Back off! Back off! No! No, no! Don't! I can't look! It's too frightening! Uh, there you see. Oh. You can't bring yourself to kiss this hideous oh. frog, but I can. Yes, yes, of course you can! My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give thee, the more I have. For both are infinite. Kiss me. Whoa. Yes! 
Shots of lag of fool and help work wonders for you. Waxen Moon gives us but five days to find this maiden Margo and induce her to marry you. It will be a task, sire. If I have but five days, then five days it shall be. It's not as if I'm without considerable skill in these matters. Yes, but you'll excuse me for saying so, sire. If my skill as a wizard is a bit, shall we say, rusty, so indeed might yours be. You never had any skills as a wizard. Well, at least what I lack. In skill, I make up with enthusiasm. No, forgive me. Perhaps if we had a plan. A plan? Yes. yes. Why, tomorrow, we will go and find Princess Kate. With the horse and carriage? Yes, we will enlist her aid, search the forest. For she is the only one to have shown us any human kindness in this godforsaken kingdom. Oh, well done. She will help us find Margot. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Oh. It's too quiet. I cannot sleep. I said I cannot sleep! Sire, there is such a thing as dignity. Would you prefer a royal command? Hey! Ah! Oh! You wanna keep it down in there? Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry, yes. Off you go, fancying you. I think we've been travelling in circles. This place looks for yes. Try over this there. This indeed must be the place. There, sire! Look, look! Yes! Look! Good princess! Do I really look like a princess to you? Yes! Indeed, sire, is she. Yeah, well, I'm not, so why don't you two just move on down the line until you find that princess you're looking for, okay? Are you not Kate? Do we know each other? For a moment, I, I thought we might have met. No, I, I think that I would remember you too. Look, you obviously have me confused with someone else, okay? Miss Kate! We desire your assistance in finding someone. We, we, we require your horse and carriage to convey us. Let me guess. East Village, right? Village. No, no, the forest. Oh, right. Central Forest, right. Okay. May I present His Royal Highness? Uh, John, Crown Prince of Anwen, protector of the realm, defender of the faith. Yes, well, I'm, I'm charmed, I'm sure, really, but I'm about to go off duty. We would pay you handsomely for your troubles. All right, it's 55 bucks an hour. Hop in. Box. Gold will suffice. My prince and I are charged on a quest. A mission of the greatest urgency. Hey, wait a minute. 
Is this one of those things where, you know, you get all dressed up and then you go looking for clues and then those clues lead you to other clues and then you get this big prize at the end? What, what is it? Um, scavenger hunt. Is that what this is? I, I once was something of a hunter, but, but now the only prize I seek is a maiden. She's ample endowed and fair of place. We seek a maiden to marry. One maiden for the both of you, huh? <laughs> yes. Well, in, in marrying me, she will save us both. I think that might be more than I needed to know, boys. What's her name? Margo. Right. Look, I, uh, I gotta call in a night, so can I drop you someplace? Oh, uh, perhaps the nearest castle. <gasps> oh, man. You two are really a piece of work, you know that? The nearest castle it is. Come on. All right. You wanted a castle? Here's your castle. Oh. How can we thank you for your kindness? Well, you can start by paying me 375 bucks. Of course. Oh. Rodney? Hey! Yes. Hey! Stop that guy! Help me! Help me! He took my bike! Help me! Damsel in distress. I'm gonna get rather used to an accident. Hey! Hey! That guy just took that lady's bike. Stolen bicycle. Turtle Pond to Belvedere Castle. Suspect heading west. Wait, wait, aren't you gonna do something? work, buddy. What are you? Robin Hood or something? John, Prince of Amelie. John Prince. How can I ever repay you? Oh, oh, seeing the thief court is enough. The castle come back. Sure. <laughs> Until tomorrow. You want to do this again? Yes, well, we must keep our sights on fair Margot, mustn't we, sir? Okay, tomorrow. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. My money? Rodney? Oh, yes, my lord, yes. Well done. What is this? Coin of the realm. Gold crown of eight. Right. Right, this is gold and, and he's Prince Charming. Thank you. No, 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 wait a minute, no, I'm serious. You guys owe me $375. But that coin bears His Highness's own likeness. Yeah, well, I would prefer the likeness of somebody that I've heard of before today. Look, I don't know what you guys are trying to pull, all right? But I have been playing along with this royal routine of yours all day long. You know, your weird outfits and your phony accents, especially yours. But come on, coin of the realm? It's a little over the top. Miss Kate, I assure you, we are in earnest, and the coin is real. Fine. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Because I am a nice person, 
And I do believe in giving everyone one chance. I'm gonna go find out if this is real. But if you guys are trying to screw me over, I know where to find you, all right? We will be here. One chance is all I desire. Right. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Here. Okay. There is the small matter of entry, sir. Nonsense. Sire, I shall scale it with my magic. Carpe diem, quid pro quo. Rise up, Rodney. Ready, set, go. to aid us. I was only musing on our fair maiden. She is fair, is she not? Oh, yes, sire. Very fair and very ripe. Indeed, as soon as we find her, you shall pluck her from the vine. <laughs> no, I was speaking of Kate. Oh, you mustn't pluck her, sire. Think only of Margot, whom you must pluck at once. Pluck and marry. Or marry and then pluck, depending on... Well, then, I've tried to make do with what I could find, but I believe these things will help in our search. Twig of tamarack. Mm -hmm. Root of oak. Skin of snake. Mm. Flick of flame. What else? What else? Yes. What else does it tell us? Well, the only thing I can tell you for any certainty, sire, is that we have but four days left before the noon bells ring. Yes. So is it worth anything? I've never seen anything like it. Where is Anne Wynn, anyway? I was hoping you would tell me that. <laughs> it's not on any map I've ever seen. So it's a fake? Well, it might be gold. Really? Well, how much would it be worth if it was gold? You got me maybe 50, 100 bucks, but you'd have to check it out at a coin shop. All right, thank you. Kate me. Can you not hear? The birds have ceased their song for fear they cannot compete with the sweet sound of your voice. Oh, well, can you not hear? The banks have ceased to give real money in return for this for fear that it is worthless. Worthless? Thanks! I assure you, the glimmering gold of that coin is as real as the shimmering brown of your hair. 
Yeah, well, maybe it's gold. But you two are going to come with me right now so I can find out exactly how much this thing is worth. And I am not letting you out of my sight until I am paid in full. You're very well. Do not release me from your sight. Sire! A damsel in distress! There is Arthur Margot. But he has tried me and, and threatened me. You're actors. This is a prop, isn't it? Hey! Hey! You see, the audience needs to feel Helena's fear. Otherwise, it's just blah, blah, blah for them. You see, Camille? Come! To strike me, sir! I believe that's more what Shakespeare had in mind. You know, I knew you'd been around a long time, Margaret, but I had no idea you knew him personally. Hey, Mish, put you up to this. I was just giving her a few friendly tips. Uh, dear lady, you see before your man cursed by fate, cast under a spell which only you can break. Really? Are you completely mad? Everybody, calm down now, calm down. I'm perfectly calm, Hamish. Let her go. This magnificent creature holds my very soul captive. Never. But I shall fight you for the right to love her. Oh, oh. Do I call security? No, no, no. This is too good. It's only fair to warn you. I saw Highlander four times. Really? Well, I once dispatched four Highlanders in a single afternoon. Huh? <laughs> Men like you fail to realize that swordsmanship is about balance. You must keep your own and upset your opponents. Good one, sire. Do you believe this guy? No, who is he? My master, Prince John, greatest sword fighter in all of Edmund. The sword should never be gripped too tightly. It should be caressed like a lover's hand. Move the action back. It's so dashing. Very, but best not to tell him. You've no idea how difficult it is to work for someone so vain and self-absorbed. As a matter of fact, I do. And force the action. Rodney of Tutor. Serena of Brooklyn. Stones and kisses. And then... Questions? <laughs> Who the hell are you anyway? Well done, sir. Darling, are you all right? Well, of course I'm all right. Yeah, why don't you tell us who you are? John, Prince of Anwen. Yeah. John, Prince of Actors. An actor? Oh, him. She's marvelous. His energy, his timing. You ought to read him for a part. A part? A part? He happens to owe me a lot of money. Oh, you see, he needs the work desperately. Oh, oh, do. Let's give him a point. Oh. An understudy for a fairy? Rodney, I hardly think this befits my status. Well, I mean, I did the best I could, sire. Oh, didn't God, I? an actor with entitlement issues. Ouch. And this peas blossom. Why, there's hardly a line at all. And no sword fighting whatsoever. Yeah, well, you don't even get to say any lines unless the little fairy gets sick. Or dies. A little overambitious, are we? You Nobody know, is right. He is. We must indeed be near our Margot, or the plan will fail. Ugh, I don't even want to know. I just want my money. Rodney, can you not work some of your magic to get me a better part by this evening? But I thought you didn't trust my magic, sire. What choice do I have? I will not fail. Okay, let's go. What, are you not coming in? No. 
I must sit here and learn my lines. But, sire, I know not yet which part will be yours. I have a taste for Oberon, King of the Fairies. But I will learn all of the lines, just in case. Is he for real? Oh, do not doubt him. Very rare. Very rare indeed. So then, it is gold? Huh, it's far more than that, my dear. This is a 15th century crown of eight. I've never even seen one, and I don't know anyone who ever has. This particular coin was only briefly minted in a kingdom called Anwin. Why only briefly? Well, according to this, the entire kingdom was destroyed in something called the War of the Tulips. All of Anwin? Well, it says here, the neighboring kingdom of Lothian beheaded Anwin's king, Leo, thus ending the Anwin line. So, this King Leo, he was, he was real? What? Yes, quite real. So, what then is, is he like John's great, 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 great grandfather or something? Quite great indeed. Miss Kate, it is best not to mention this to John. This will not sit well with him just now. I, I shall break the news in time. All right, $5,625 is your change. Oh, no, that's for you. Yeah, but that would be like hiring me for a couple of weeks, with money to spare. Consider it done. Well, can, can I at least take you out? You know, I don't know, buy you something? A square meal would be nice. <laughs> One we didn't have to catch ourselves. Right. <laughs> and, and maybe some new clothes. Ooh, this is screaming your name. Orange is hot, baby. Hot. Oh, everybody's gotta have a vest. Oh, I'm feeling this. Yes. No, it's I, me, for aught that I could ever read. Read. For aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth. <laughs> I'm with Shakespeare on that one. Okay, okay, sorry. <clears throat> but either it was different in blood... Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes. Or if there were sympathy and choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, as brief as the lightning in the blackened night. And ere a man had power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bright things come to confusion. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, khakis? I grabbed some of both. Now, are you a pleats or a flat front kind of guy? Flats. You two should get out more often. We should indeed. Mm. Oh, look, I'll calm you serving when it approaches. Uh, Kate, is everything okay? Yeah. I was wondering, might you have a leg of mutton? No. Jugged hare? Or a roast guinea fowl? Oh, keep on. What, the peacock? Peacock! peacock. Yeah. Do you have any peacock? Yeah. Peacock? No, and I don't have any blackbirds baked in a pie either. <laughs> no, we're fine. Good. Thank you. Should have known you two would be meat and potato types. <laughs> oh, and a tank of the veil. Mm. I must say, I'm quite fond of being a man. Well said, sire. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are too much. Too much of what? It's too much everything, you know? Just the way you talk and, you know, the act, whatever it is. So you can't just go around talking about how good it is to be a man, you know? Is it not good to be a man? Better a man than a frog. <laughs> 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 Rodney, do you not think you should be getting back to the theatre about my part? Oh, yes, of course. Do not tarry, sire. I fed for all the berries. Are we gonna go? More. More. Suck it in. Suck it in. I'm sucking. Hmm. I'll get your bigger size. Delivery for Titania, Queen of the Fairies. For me? 
Oh, Serena, aren't they lovely? Pretty, very pretty. Hey, Mish. Watch out for the thorns. Oh, honey, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. oh. Delivery for Helena. Oh, that's me. I'm Helena. Hey, Mish. They're beautiful. Thank you. You're the best. Put these in water? Drown them. With pleasure. Yes. Rodney? For me? Yes, Serena. Might I enlist your aid? I'll be right back! Come over here. It's a kind of magic, is it not? Yeah, I, I guess I used to think so. It just started out as a hobby, actually. See, everyone who rides in a handsome cab, you know, they want their picture taken, so... I would send one, and then I would keep one for myself. And I just started writing things down that I remembered. You know, thinking that I would figure out the magic of love or something. I'm just turned into this book. About the magic of love? No. How about the disappointment of love? You know, how you start out with all of these bright hopes and everything, and... Okay, look. Like this guy. There he is. He was saying all the right things to her, and she was just looking at him and just thinking how unbelievably lucky she was. Well, that is a lovely story. No, it's not, because about a year later, I'm driving this couple around, and I'm hearing the exact same lines. So I turn around, and it's the same guy. It's just with a different girl. That same dopey look on her face. I just know that none of it's real. But you know how that feels. You can tell. Yes. I broke someone's heart once. And I can still remember the sadness in her eyes. The sadness I deeply regret. Heartbreaker, huh? I could have called that one. Okay, let me get this straight. Unless John marries Margot by Friday, the two of you will end up frogs for the rest of your lives. No, forever and ever. I knew there was something special about you the moment I saw you. You really? That's awfully nice of you to say. Because I, I saw immediately that there was something special about you. Yeah? Like we knew each other in a past life? Were you getting that, this past life thing? Well, I'm afraid to say it's been all one long life for me, you know. Hopping from here to there. Hopping, I get it. <laughs> hopping, it's funny, I get that hopping. No, but also <laughs> slogging through the muck, eating nothing. But fly. Well, what's funny about that? I mean, that could get very old, right? I knew you'd understand. Of course I do. I understand exactly. There is this instant connection between us. Donkey ears, Manny. I'm wearing donkey ears. Look, I'm a romantic lead. I should be playing Lysander, not bottom. Uh, all right. Okay, he's the one. Look under M for mute. Of course, I won't have this book completely memorized. Yeah, up to me. Seize cats, cold with like that. You read this? My grandfather wrote it, yes. Oh, my God. Here we go. There he is. Mm-hmm. Yes. Romulus, yes. Remus, grant this, please. Look, man, he's just a TV pilot. Look at his mouth. Don't freeze. Remind me why I'm here. He's mute. <gasps> Did I hear that? Oh, my God. Nathan, are Hello. you all right? Are you ill? This is Rodney. Hello. Is that you, shame? Have you met him? Don't... Low blood sugar, really. Good luck tonight. Let's get a <laughs> These be the flowers of odious, savor sweet. Odorous. Odorous. Odorous, savor That's not her bottom. So hath thy breath. <laughs> Where's her bottom? Shh. My Lost his voice five minutes begin. before curtain call. Go figure. Thank God we got this guy. Nobody told me. You might have been a little busy with Camille. 
running lines. Of course you were. Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. It's stunning, Debbie. Don't you think? Did you hear the laugh? Yes, crazy boy, you're absolutely crazy. Yes, they are, aren't they? And I'm yet to do my love scene where I shall woo her. Oh, sire. An ass? What wooing will I do in this? Did you not read the play? Only the lines. Actors. Actors. Trust me, sire. Kate is here. She will see me. Sire, if we woo not Margot, we woo in vain. Mine eye is enthralled by thy shape, and thy fair virtue's force before stuff move me on first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Oh, uh, methinks, mistress, you have little reason for that. Um. And yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. <laughs> Nay, I can gleek upon occasion. <laughs> thou art wise, thou art beautiful. <laughs> Remove this cursed thing. Yes, it appears to be stuck, sire. Oh. Oh, she approaches. Oh. Oh. Fair Margot. For me. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> And again, you are... Why, lady, I am your very own bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. I, on the other hand, don't like you at all. Try bringing your performance down to maybe a deafening roar, young man. Margot, do you think I could have a word, please? I'm listening. What's about your performance? What, 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 what about it? What about it? Oh. <sighs> The answer's had our most excellent efforts. Well done. Hi. Hi, Hi. 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 You, you were wonderful. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Can I take you out to celebrate? Oh, yes. Good. Come. Still have the money you gave me. Yeah. Congratulations. You made quite an impression. Margo wants you to play Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet tomorrow night. It would appear they liked your ass, sire. <laughs> he is not an ass as well, is he? No, no, he's yeah. handsome. He's a great friend yes. of Romeo's. It's a big, big, big part. Big swordsman. Sword. Scene stealer. Perfect for you. Well, splendid. Well, I shall play it. Come, Kate. We have much to celebrate. But there are so many lines to learn, sire. Y yes, John is a very big part. Well, don't stay out late. <clears throat> all right, all right. All right. Yeah, see, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be going on. Come, sir, your Posado. Ha! Ha! Good. And now? So, you fight with Tibble, and then Romeo steps in front, and Tybalt takes his sword, and he shoves it under Romeo's arm and into your chest. I lose. Apparently, yes, you lose. Who is this Shakespeare fellow? First I am to wear an ass's head, and now I lose a sword fight. Sire, I implore you. Have I ever lost a sword fight in my life? Of course not. But the point is, the play must be done as written. Margot would prefer it so. I am sure of it. Mm. Worry not, faithful squire. Have I ever let you down? Shall I rib it for you, sire? I thought they were offering me the lead. No. They want me to play the mother. And she's not even a district attorney or a drunk or, or anything interesting. She's, she's just somebody's boring mother who's about to become a grandmother. Hamish, Hamish, how did this happen to me? I'm playing Juliet. I can't be somebody's grandmother. Then don't be. Tell them to find somebody else. Makeup's looking a wee bit heavy, don't you think? What is it? Margot, there's someone here to see you. Oh, Serena, I am just a little preoccupied at the moment. I know that, but Rodney is a big fan. Big fan. Fine. Fine. What? What is it? What? What? Go ahead, tell her. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, might I say, uh, Miss Stocker, that you look positively enchanting this evening. I suppose. Do you mind? Do you mind? 
Man's trying to speak. The man is trying to kiss your hand. <laughs> He's kissing my hand. That's so cute when he does that. <laughs> well, you may continue. Yes, well, um, my master, John Anwen, who is portraying the role of Mercutio this evening, uh, would like to draw your attention to his performance in the third act. He is dedicating his death scene to your dulcet beauty. My dulcet beauty? Who exactly is this, John Anwen? The understudy. Oh, yeah. Five minutes, please. Well, tell this John of yours. He's very kind. And now I, I must prepare. Thank you so much. For your... You have four minutes to curtain. Serena. Tell me the truth. Is my makeup too heavy? No. You look 16. Give or take. What wouldst thou have of me, Mercutio? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives. Gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up. Come, sir, your posada. Gentlemen, the dame, the band is outraged. Tybalt, Mercutio, the prince expressly hath forbid this banding in the Verona streets. Oh, Tybalt, good Mercutio. Ah! Art thou not hurt? Nary a scratch, good Romeo. It's not the way it is. He's supposed to die. So well, are you always going to know how it's going to end? Go for it, Mercutio! <laughs> Who cares? It is you who shall die this day! <laughs> Gentle Mercutio! Thy wound, tis wide oh. as a church door. Then this church has narrow doors indeed, friend Romeo. Now stand aside whilst I skewer this rogue for Juliet's sake. <laughs> is not worth the bother. He's adorable. Yeah. He's so dashing. Exactly. I know. I know. I know. He's not too young. Too young for what? I'm sure he knows everything he needs to know. And what he doesn't know, you can teach him, right? Nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about Hamish, though? Hamish Shmamish. When's the last time he called you a dulcet beauty? Yeah. Am I crazy? What's crazy? How many chances do you have left? What do you mean by that? I'm just saying. You gotta be open to opportunities. Yeah. I think William Shakespeare is somewhat limited, don't you? What do you think? <laughs> what do you mean? All this rhyming side. Yeah. Silly. For soup, there's my tooth. I wouldn't uh, mention that in too many circles, by the way. You know. Margot would like to invite you to her apartment for a late night supper this evening. That's her address. Oh. Uh, thank you. Um, tell Margot I accept. Well, congratulations. This is a big night for you. Kate, um, I just wanted you to understand what? that... Must understand. You're gonna score with the maiden of your dreams. You keep score? 
Never met a man who didn't. Oh, I see what you mean. So you do. Keep score, huh? No, I, I keep no count. I need memories, sweet as rum pudding. Well, knock yourself out. Bye, Rodney. Am I late? Not at all. Well, what an entrance. You certainly know how to sweep a girl off her feet. To a night of love. Oh, to an eternity of love. An eternity? Oh, darling, shouldn't we slow down just a bit? Maybe have a little chit-chat. You can tell me all about you. I can tell you all about me. Do you not feel time slipping away? What do you mean by that? Only that... We should seize the moment. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? Bedroom's this way. Hmm. Uh, but what, what's the matter? I don't know. Perhaps I cannot deflower the woman I'm pledged to love. Oh, that's sweet, really. But, um, I've been deflowered before. Did a few petals here and there. A fair Margot. Take this ring as a symbol of my love. Is this a joke? It is but an overture to a life of wedded bliss. Wedded bliss? Oh, honey, take it from me. I've been married three times. There ain't much bliss in it. But I am your prince, and you are my princess. And our marriage is fated by the stars. Not by my stars. And, um... I have them checked every week. No, please, keep the ring. But don't you see, you and I don't need some silly piece of paper. You and I are bonded by a desire. So you refuse my troth? Well, yes, but it was wonderfully theatrical. <laughs> My father beheaded, Anwin destroyed, and I am the cause. Oh, sire, that there were tulips. I might have changed all of that. All that was good might have been saved. On his good soul, Rodney, I pledge to make right my princely transgressions, to redeem my father's faith in me. Just one day to pledge eternal love. Mine to Margot. And hers to me. Coming! I tried to call you last night. Oh, how sweet. Five times. Oh, even sweeter. I suppose you must have been with that Anwin fellow. Hmm? Oh, no. We're not jealous, are we? Of course not. What you do when we're apart is none of my business. Oh, good. Then it won't bother you that he's asked me to marry him. Marry him? Can't you see he's playing you for a fool? Well, give me this ring, says he's a prince. I'm starting to believe him. The man's a fraud. <laughs> Princess Margot does have a certain ring to it. He's a fraud, and I'm going to prove it. Oh. I'll have him tossed from the company. So oh. glad you're not jealous, darling. You propose to her? It is the only way we will be saved. For I must marry Margot, otherwise we are doomed. You know, this is really none of my business. No, no. I seek your counsel. Well, I just think that maybe you have a few issues. Uh, issues? Yeah, I think that it's obvious that you've got some sort of, you know, Prince Charming complex. You know, can't keep your sword in your pants. Can't pass up a damsel in distress. I like those. Of course you do. For about half a second, as long as you can see her as some sort of reflection of your own ego and not as a real person who has real feelings. Well, perhaps she needed real help. Look, not every girl wants to be saved. 
What does she want? True love. You know? I wish I did. You know, when you're... When you're old and, and you're wrinkly and you're sitting there gumming your food, then your husband looks at you. And even though he doesn't see very well anymore, he can see in your eyes the whole world. Future, past, everything that was good, and even things that were bad. And he can still say, there is my queen. And what a privilege it has been to love her. I believe that that is something that my father felt for my mother. He tried to tell me so, but I couldn't hear it. Well, your father was a lucky man. Not so lucky. Then what? She refused him. Oh, figure. She's crazy for Hamish. And John's crazy for Kate. Now we gotta play hardball. Potion. Sometimes love just needs a little encouragement. I love this store. Okay, grab some bags. Uh, let's see. Rose petals? Rose petals. Rose petals. That's right. That's yes. right. Lavender? Lavender. Oh, Lavender. I think this is that. Right there. Lavender. Ginseng. 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 Oh, yeah. There it is. Right. Uh, let's see. A vial of dragon's blood. We're not going to find that here. No. 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 Let's, let's go. Okay, Rodney. All we need is one. Yes. Just one. Frightened? Frightened? Oh, that's feminine! Watch out! Oh, God. Oh, perfect. Oh, 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 The British government holds title to Anwen Castle and a small fortune in gold, which only the rightful heir can claim. A small fortune? But to lay claim, the heir must produce the Anwen family ring. Of course, there have been countless attempts to do so with fake rings. So your <clears throat> prince is a complete fake? Just like the ring, an elaborate ruse. A ruse for what? He's a desperate young actor who's deluded himself into believing that being married to Margot Stockard might actually mean something. It meant something to my three ex-husbands. It certainly did. More alimony than you can afford. It's so impossible to believe that someone might actually fall in love with me. No. It happened to me. <sighs> oh, it happened to me, too. <laughs> Are you sure you won't come over for a little lunch? Oh, got a lot of work to do in the script. Darling, Shakespeare's already done most of the work for you. There you are. Ready, pedal? Tell me, Bob, what does the real ring look like? If only he was still here to advise me. His counsel was always so wise. You see, had I only married the Princess of Lothian, the war might have ended. He might have lived. And in time, I may have earned the crown. Look, this is all very sweet, the way that you believe all of this. But... Only a fair likeness, I would say. I don't know what's 
going on here, and I... I don't think I even want to know, because this is just too weird. Kate, I just... I just wanted you to know how deeply I wish my fate were otherwise. What the... The fate where you, you don't turn into a frog if if you marry Margot. <laughs> it's my destiny. It's my duty. Look, I wish you the best of luck with this curse thing. Or whatever. Okay, okay. You will find your prince one day. And when you do, let him love you and cherish you through all of your days while I live ever more in envy of his fortune. Oysters and crawfish, pomegranate pie, parsnip mousse, figs stuffed with vanilla bean. Aspic of love apple gilded with saffron, and my own personal favorite, boiled meats. Ooh. Shall I play mummy? Maybe not just yet. <sighs> Perhaps a love song to stimulate the appetite. Maybe not that, either. I've had a terrible migraine all day. A martini would be lovely. Oh, yes, two. Two of those, Rodney. Yes, sire. At once. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Fair Margot, are the boiled meats not to your liking? No, 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 no. I'm sure the boiled meats are lovely. It's, it's really nothing. It's not nothing at all. I, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> Ipso facto minimus me, no longer lack love shall they be. Shaken or stirred? Why not shaken and stirred? I like it. Mm. Do you think we should try it first? If by some miracle should work. I shouldn't know the difference. For I'm under a spell already. Oh, Rodney, you're so romantic. Plus, I think I'm getting a little high from the fumes. <laughs> oh, Rodney, I've been wanting to do that for 500 years. Oh, my God, that's right. <laughs> I think we better get that out there. Yes, yes. yes quickly, quickly. Yes. Wait. What? I, I'm not sure. I, I'm suddenly feeling somewhat uncertain. What's wrong? I mean, I, mean, I have served him long enough, have I not? Six thousand moons? You've served him well. Yes, and, and life with Margot, I mean, things could be worse, could they not? Margot's not so bad. She's just a little insecure, that's all. She just wants somebody to love her. And why shouldn't she have somebody nice like John? Yes, of course. But no, 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 no. John loves Kate. I don't know. To deny love, I mustn't. I couldn't. I shouldn't. Rodney, you'll be frogs. Good point. Drink, silly one. Sire, so, you disappeared. It was not so bad being a frog. Not so bad. Had a few good times, did we not, Rodney? Very few, sire. But better to be a man. 
Oh, much better, sir. And if it would be any help to you at all, uh, Miss Serena and I concocted a love potion. Do you think it would have worked? Frankly, no, sire. For as you've always said, I'm not much of a wizard. Yeah. I was wrong, Rodney. For you are a true wizard indeed. For you have turned a master into a devoted friend. And that is the greatest magic of all. Oh, sire. No, I've only John from now on. For my best man is to be a free man. Best man? Yes. For I did woo Margot and begged her troth. We are to be married one day's hence before the noon bells of St. Timothy's ring. And I am to remain a man? And be free? Had I only done it long ago. Wait, if... If you are free from my service, then... Are you not free from the curse as well? Do you think so, sire? Well, I don't see why not. Well, I'm sure you're right. For you had but one moon left in my service and you've served... 5,275 more than that. Right. Just a bit of overtime. <laughs> no harm done, for I'm free. I am free, sire. Uh, John. <laughs> Prince John. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. And it is my fate to marry Margot. Do you, Margot, take this man, John, to be your lawfully wedded husband, to cherish him always for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do you part? I do. You don't. I already did. You can't. She must. Do you? I do not. So let them ring. Margot, you do not love me. I cannot let you marry me. At last. Somebody talking sense around here. Well, I've, I've been married with love and without love, and it all ends up pretty much the same. Well, then none of those is the love you deserve, fair Margot. Nor is mine. For you deserve the love I feel for Kate. In whose eyes I gaze and see my own reflection and see the whole world and all that is possible and true. For when I look upon her, my heart says only, There. There is my queen. And what a privilege it would be to love her. If I must live the rest of my life without her, then I may as well be a frog. You sweet man. for the little people. Then let's be little people, till we're hideous and old and still mad about each other. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh my. Whoa. Ah, <laughs> here. Your case. Your 
kiss that made a man of me. No, sire, it was not just the kiss. The answer was in the curse all along. Should he find true, true love? A kiss was never enough. True love was our only chance. Everybody deserves one chance. That's what you said. Hmm. One chance at true love. To all of you, take all of you to be your lawfully wedded spouses, to cherish each other always, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. I, I do. do. I do. I do. I do. I do.